Hey, good evening, everybody. Shannon Stewart, Shannon Stewart Ministries. Today, I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about the arrogance of the ignorant consumer. And I know you might be saying, the arrogance of the ignorant consumer makes no sense. But by the end of this video, you'll see that it makes a great deal of sense. Now listen, when I'm thinking about, um, and I'm going to use some Bible verses here, so because I get a lot of discussion from people saying, uh-oh, he brings up the Bible. Guess what? I'm a minister. It's par for the course. We're going to talk about finances, but we're going to talk about the Bible as well. Now, the Bible talks about my people being destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it's because they've rejected knowledge. They'll also be rejected. But what it talks about is the fact that people have knowledge available to them, but they reject it. And when I look at the monetary system as, as it's been created, uh, it's created on the backs of ignorance. Now, when I look at the top 10 brands in the, in, in the world, or, or, or what's the top 10 most lucrative brands in the world, they're brands that are built on the backs of ignorant consumers. And even if we look at, at, at you know, here's the top 10 brands here, but and even if we take some time to look at, you know, brands 11 and on in the top 20, uh, these are brands that are based on ignorance. People have no idea uh, you know, what makes up these brands and what these brands support and how these brands, uh, you know, if these brands give back to the communities or not, you know, it's just outright ignorance, but the hyper consumptive nature of people causes you to continue to, to, to over utilize these brands. Now, listen, human nature is, is, is focused on consumption and the monetary system depends on that. Now, remember, I talked about this in, in previous videos that money in its rawest form is just a medium of exchange. And, you know, uh, uh, this picture here, this represents a, it's a scarab beetle coin. Scarab beetle was a wooden coin utilized in, uh, in, in ancient Egypt. Um, and, you know, when, when the, 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 the Jews uh, first entered into Egypt um, before the Exodus, what got them in the Exodus was the, the transfer of wealth from silver and gold to the scarab beetle coin. Years later, the Egyptian people said, look, we don't take scarab beetle coins. We only take silver and gold. Um, the Jews says, we don't have that. And they said, well, you can work for us. And boom, servitude uh, ensued years later. The need to consume put them in that position. And many of us are in that same position today. You know, when I, when I think about the role of people that, are, that, are, that should be uh, responsible uh, you know, I, I think if you're in the top 1% earners and you got media attention and, and, and you have a platform, there there is a great deal of responsibility that uh, is required for you to be a responsible consumer. If you, if you choose to go out and spend millions of dollars on cards or lavish things, that's fine. But set an example, uh, particularly when we start looking at millennials and in, in the, in the earning and spending power of millennials uh, as it pertains to... Um, you know, being uneducated in the in the sense of how they spend. Now, now, now take a look at this. This is a, a spending trajectory of of, uh, of of how people spend their money currently. Uh, people that make less than hundred thousand dollars a year, and it's interesting because you look at at basic things. So, you know, people do spend a great deal of of, of money on on housing. Well, of course, it has to be that way. You know, on food and on eating out. But there's things that, that kind of keep the, the engine going that people that don't make a lot of money still spend a lot of money on. Luxury items, luxury goods. Um, you know, I, I read an ar article a couple of days ago in Business Insider that talked about um, that luxury brands are still experiencing a great deal of success even though people are not working. Which leads me to believe that, um, you know, the, the spending power of... of you know, people are, are, are misutilizing their spending power. And when you think about it, um, again, my background is in the, the credit space and uh, in the finance space. So I firsthand have, have seen the, the misuse of money by people over uh, an extended period of time. And it's, it's interesting when I, when I speak to people that are in that top 1% of, of, of earners, um, you know, people that, that have a net worth of a million dollars or greater, it's, it's interesting, they're focused on things that aren't consumable. 
And, and, and that's, that's really interesting. It's a really telling fact that if I talk to a guy that uh, is worth $120 million, that I never see this guy talking about the fact of buying the newest car or the brand new Jordans. You know, that guy will never be in line on a Saturday morning waiting for the newer Jordans that were released 15 years ago to re-come out again. Consumables. Consumables. See, we've been programmed that uh, to think that our 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 pure depiction of success is material wealth, and it causes us then at that point. And I talked to this in a previous video about your money or your assignment. It causes us to to chase the tool rather than chase the assignment and not know what our assignment is. You know, if if your tool is to to amass a great deal of wealth so you can buy a bunch of stuff, guess what? You're the ignorant consumer. And it's your arrogance that will then soon lead to your downfall. Now, look, when, when I when I think about my time spent in the mortgage space and then I, you know, look, I've, I've been responsible for a great deal of, of uh, uh, disposing of uh, foreclosed assets. And I've spent a great deal of time uh, in that space. So I clearly understand what goes on there. And when I look at a lot of those properties that were investment properties, they were investment properties of people that weren't top 1% earners. You know, they thought it was a good idea that they could get rich quick without really understanding the, the, the process. So they embarked on a journey that came back to bite them in the behind. The ignorant consumer. When I look at, um, you know, and I, I, I'm always utilizing this, 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 uh, this example in videos because it's so shocking to me that people will go wait in line for brand new Air Jordans that were released 10, 15 years ago to buy those shoes or 15, 20 years ago to buy those shoes for more money than they were sold for 20 years ago. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen, but Nike depends on that. Again, Nike is one of the top brands. They're, they're, they're in the top, they're number 18 in the top 20 brands, uh, according to Forbes magazine. The dumb consumer, the ignorant consumer. You know, when I look at the top brands, I mean, even a brand like Apple, and I'm not picking on Apple. I mean, look, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an iPhone user, so so I'm not picking on Apple at all. But again, they still sell a great deal of stuff to people that are sub forty five thousand six hundred and twenty eight dollar a year earners. And guess what happens? The phone companies now they'll make a great deal for you to to be able to put yourself in that position to continue to consume. Hey, you can't pay for the phone right now. Guess what? Give us 20 bucks a month. We'll take it. Stretch yourself. You can do it. Spend more. Consume more. Guys, listen, we have to have an idea of where our money's going and how our money's spending. You know, take a look at this slide here. When you, you look at this slide, this shows the breakdown of a normal person's spending habits. You know, people that make, you know, 40 to 50,000, 50 to 70,000, and 70,000 and greater. And, and you know, like I, I, I used to fall into that when I was when I was younger, and and you know, I think when I was twenty five years old, I probably made forty five thousand dollars a year or so, and and you know, I, I look at, um, you know, the drive that I had to, because you know, I, I was and I was in the credit space at the time, but I still made a lot of money, too, you know, more money than I should have too fast. So then I, you know, my thought process was, what can I buy with this money? How can I spend this money? Uh, com the uh, comedian Chris Rock once said that, you know, people spend money, you know, they want to spend money like they think it's going to rot. A again, consumable goods. You know, I was one of the guys that, you know, now look, keep in mind, I didn't wait in line for Air Jordans at the time because, you know, 20 years ago, I don't think people did that. But, you know, it, it, it's it's almost like we begin to place such a value on the item that we forget that the item doesn't cost much to make. I think a pair of Air Jordans cost what six or seven dollars to make, and that includes includes uh, the cost of Nike getting them from uh, a foreign, you know, Taiwan or wherever they're met in China or Taiwan to get them back here. Um, you know, it, it, it was interesting because when uh, it, people always ask me, being in the finance space, they'll say things like, "What's this worth?" You know, particularly as you talk about real estate, "What's this house worth?" Well, the house is worth what a person will pay for it. And guess what? A company will continue to charge what they want to charge if a person will pay for it. Um, you know, when, when I think about, you know, even for those of us that grew up in the early, early 90s, uh, particularly if you grew up here in, in, in Los Angeles, 
you know, you always had to be on the lookout if you had, you know, new tennis shoes or uh, a new starter jacket. You know, I, it's, it's funny, my wife who didn't grow up here, you know, I would always tell the story about guys walking up to you and going and, and seeing you with new shoes on and they would go, hey, what size are those? You would either say my size and be prepared to knuckle up or <laughs> you would take them off. But again, those shoes then, you know, in some instances, they were, they, what were they worth? They were worth people's life, a consumable good. So let's, let's really, you know, evaluate what type of consumer are we? Are we a consumer that chases the Joneses, which is an ignorant consumer? Are we a consumer that's somewhat responsible and has some type of sense of social, social consciousness of how we're utilizing our money? Because again, I mean, you, you know, you look at a lot of these brands, uh, particularly when you look at brands that are, are, are not in the top 10, you know, let's say look at, you look, you look at this sheet here and you look at ba brand 14, which is Louis Vuitton, uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, Martel and Hennessy, you know, they make everything in France. Now they do uh, Louis Vuitton, they do, um, you know, liquor and champagne and, and all kind of luxury items. And guess what? People that don't make money are still saving their money to spend money on these type of things. Chasing the carrot, chasing the Joneses. And it really puts us in a, in a, in a poor financial state, um, you know, particularly as I look at how money is spent. Uh, unfortunately, how money is spent among, among people that are underserved uh, or, or, you know, under it or, or, or ill-educated in regards to financial well-being and you know when, when, when i think about this you know there's some things that that come about from this because there's other people that talk about finances um again i talk about finances solely from a biblical perspective and how uh, the lord wants us to handle our money but there's so, certain other people that talk about finances and financial literacy from a secular perspective and they talk about you know, get yourself financially fit and then, you know, handle all your business. And then one day you'll be able to be a resource to your community and give back to others. And I, I think of it as just the opposite. I mean, I think you have to have some sense of, of social responsibility in regards to how you're spending money and how you're handling money and how you're dealing with money to then be an asset to the, to your community and those around you. You know, no, no matter what you are, whether you're black, white, purple, blue, green, um, you know, it's a, you, there's a sense of social responsibility that you have and, 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 leaving a legacy for your loved ones, but also in setting the tone of how younger people will spend and utilize their money. So I always talk about this, you know, how do you know what type of consumer you are? Well, let's look at how you spend your money. You know, here's a budget form. Now this budget form, it's, it's extremely simple, extremely, extremely simple. It's something that I give to people that are just beginning in that, that stage and phase of, of budgeting just to write things out to know where they're at today and how their money's being spent. Um, you know, to know how your money is being spent and then how much of your overall budget is being spent by that category. It's really telling. I mean, you, you do this and then, you know, you kind of set the benchmark to then redo it month over month. Now, you know, the budget for my household that we use is a little bit more elaborate um, because, you know, I try to look at where I'm at today versus where I was at six months ago versus where I was at a year ago then versus where I need to be. And then how much am I giving? Is my giving up? Is my giving down? What other causes am I, am I behind? Uh, what ministry causes am I behind? What non-ministry causes am I behind? How are, how's our family impacting the lives of others? I mean, again, this is resource management. Money's a resource. Money's a tool. How are you managing your resource? So I challenge you guys today. Like I, I put a link to the, to the budget form uh, in this video. Take a look at it. Take a look and see how you're spending your money. You know, get a handle on that. Try to figure out what type of consumer you are, where your priorities are, what are you focused on, what things are important to you. And then let's touch back. I want to start talking about credit and then how the credit system works, things that impact your credit, things that influence your credit. I, mean, I think most people think that credit's just one thing. Hey, do I pay my bills on time? But there's five items that impact your credit. And I will talk about those in the next video. So remember, I love you. God loves you. And until next time, keep living in victory.